I just want to introduce my violin. This instrument was made in the year 1742 by Guarneri del Gesù. Guarneri and Stradivari are considered to be the two greatest violin makers ever to have lived, and it's really a matter of taste which one you prefer. Um, good comparison might be to uh, white wine and red wine. Um, Guarneri's are definitely the red wine end of the spectrum. They're very deep and dark, uh, very rich and powerful in the lower end of the range. And there are actually only just over 40 Guarneri del Jesus in the world and more than 700 strads. So they're very valuable, rare instruments. I'm very lucky to have one. And I've always been a Guarneri girl myself. That's definitely where my taste lies. Um, they can be as sweet as a strad when they need to, but they've also got guts. Um, through the years, um, you know, Perlman and Anna Sophie Mutter played strads. Um, Paganini, Isaac Stern, um, Fritz Chrysler, Heifetz all played um, del Jesus. Now, often an instrument is known as the X something or another. It always has to be somebody who's no longer living. So it, it could be an owner of an instrument. It could be somebody who played it throughout their career. Um, so, for example, if I play this instrument for the next 50 years, um, I will never actually know whether it became the X Pine because once the world makes that decision, I won't be around to find out about it. Um, but right now, this violin is known as the X Soldat in honor of Marie Soldat, who was one of the rare 19th century women violin soloists. Marie Soldat was born in Austria, discovered as a teenager by Brahms, who became one of her mentors. And she was a part of his inner circle of chamber musicians throughout his, the remainder of his life. And she was one of the first champions of the Brahms Violin Concerto, which became her signature piece. And when she got to the point in her career where she really needed a good instrument to play her concerts on, well, of course, they were priced far out of reach. I guess things were no different back then than they are today. So Brahms went and found an aristocratic family to purchase an instrument for Marie Soldat's use, and Brahms himself picked this one. So it's, <laughs> I just wish it could tell me about meeting Brahms. <laughs> I think we have time for a couple of questions. If any of you have a question? Yes? When you are allowed to use the right device, what kind of music is on there? Ah, what do I listen to? Yes. Well, I, of course, you know, love to listen to classical music, but I can't turn off that studying side of my brain when I am. So if I want to listen to music for sheer pleasure, it's got to be heavy metal. Ah, good question. How did I come to be the current player of this amazing instrument? Well, um, three CDs ago, I was about to record um, the Brahms Violin Concerto with my hometown band, the Chicago Symphony. And um, I was playing a different Del Jesu at that point that I was borrowing from a foundation. And a friend of mine said, hey, you know what, I have this other friend who owns an instrument that has a connection to Brahms. Would you be interested in borrowing it? Well, of course I said I would be thrilled. So I met the instrument and I absolutely fell in love with it. It was just everything I had ever been looking for in a violin, besides being perfect for the Brahms and that recording. So it was supposed to be a short-term loan just for the album, but I couldn't bear the idea of giving it back, and luckily the CD was nominated for a Grammy, and the owner was inspired to let me continue using it, and I've had it ever since. Yo-Yo Ma beat me. <laughs> yes. Well, I know the bow is very important, too. Can you tell us something about your bow? Uh, well, I always say it's like Italian food and French wine. So we've got our Italian fiddles and our, our French bows. Uh, so this is uh, by one of the two greatest French bow makers, um, Tort and Picot. This is a Picot. And it's really interesting because a bow is much harder to find than a fiddle. A, a good violin can work for a lot of players, but a bow is so individual because it not only has to be a good total match with a violin, and you'd be surprised how a different bow will really affect the colors that are coming out of an instrument. But it also has to be comfortable in um, the hand of the particular player. So I looked through literally hundreds of bows to find the one that was the right match for me and for this violin. Um, I didn't date nearly as many guys to find my husband, let's put it that way. <laughs>